after you say i do you have prayed the lord has led you you have come for counseling you have done premarital training you have read how to deal with in-laws how to take care of a husband you have become a wife material you have become a husband material what are the things that you do as you continue in the journey of marriage because the journey of marriage there's no retirement it is the dead do us part you can never see anybody that will come and share testimony here and say thank god church for me i just retired from the marriage institution it can't happen anyway you continue till christ come i just pray that you will not endure that marriage you will enjoy it in jesus name please say a good amen now the test for this segment we have ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 to 12. two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed if one person falls the other can reach out and help but someone who falls alone is in real trouble likewise two people lying close together can keep each other warm but how can one be warm alone a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated but two can stand back to back and conquer three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken may the lord bless his word in jesus name when you are joined together as a couple you are expected to produce better results marriage should make your life better and not make your life bitter marriage should make your life better and not make it bitter Marriage should be a catalyst to your vision, not a cataract to your eyes. It should take you higher in wisdom. Because in marriage, you have opportunity to learn. All sorts of things will come as, you know, to test you. But if you are built up, you know, wisdom, learning, prayer, everything, you can withstand the test and pass all the way. So now, how do we confront the journey of after you say, I do. Number one thing, I want to encourage all couples in the house. Please, as you journey, do not relegate God in your home. Don't relegate God. Don't relegate God. Be intentional about creating a spiritual atmosphere at home. Many a times you get to a Christian home, you can't differentiate whether this is a Christian home or you are somewhere. We must be Christian in even what we watch on TV the way we dress, what we say, the atmosphere at home must be conducive for the Holy Spirit to reign, for our children to even grow. Please, let's be very careful that it is not in, in a Christian home, you are going home, you have to be reciting Psalm, God cover me and uh, fight for me. You want to enter your own house and you have to do some sort of uh, covering spiritually because you don't know what is waiting for you through your spouse. No no the presence of god in our home should deflate pressure we are in the economy situation that is very tense if you do not know god and if you relegate him the tension will be multiplied even inside the house because if you see anything burning on on gas like this the way you will talk you will have forgotten that you are a christian so that's why we need to be under the regulation of the holy spirit don't relegate god create a spiritual atmosphere let there be family altar a family that prays together will stay together. At this time, you don't need division at home. You need to pray with your spouse. You need to pray with your children. You need to pray with your family. Those that are not around, maybe your children are somewhere, please pray for them. Pray with them. Take prayers and the words of God seriously at this time. Because we are, we are in the end time. Then allow God to rule and reign in your family. This is very important. It's very, very important. The Bible says in Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who we'll build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. There are many times that money fails. But when we have God, God cannot fail us. Where you cannot be physically, with your children, wherever they are, you can send God an errand. He will be there with them. And he will protect them. He will guide them. Please, let us have godly vision in raising our family we are christians we should not forget that we should not forget that many teachings are going on on social media a marriage is a scam who is coming who? who is a scammer who is coming who please let's be very careful the people we follow 
on social media so that they don't teach us heresy and we don't pass the heresy to our children. Please develop godly vision and run your home on that godly vision. Then develop godly values and virtues as a parent and pass it on to your children. Look unto God for wisdom and guidance in your home. No matter how complicated the situation is, call on God to give you wisdom to navigate. Every time, things can become so rough at times. But ask God for the wisdom to navigate. Then make the Lord to help you build your home. And it will help you all the way in Jesus' name. Please say amen, church. Number two, number two. After you say I do, understand that marriage takes work. Wedding day is a glamour. Wedding ceremony is full of, you know, glamorous activities. But after which you enter into real work. Marriage takes work. Marriage generally starts with, you know, a lot of excitement. Then after, there's realization that there is work to do. There is work to do. What kind of work? What makes it work? What will help us make marriage work? Number one, we need a heart of service. You must be able to serve each other in marriage. Don't just sit down and you are just crossing your leg, enjoying yourself, browsing, meeting up deadlines, and only one party is running her task, doing all sorts of things without your support. By the time you now need each other in the bedroom at night, because the person is exhausted, your wife is exhausted, and you now want to do hello, love, that your hand will look like some paper on her body. She won't feel it because she's exhausted. But we can help ourselves. We can put support, emotional support, physical support, spiritual support. You know that your husband is mentally down on a project. Take it up in prayer. Take that situation up in prayers. We need a heart of service. To truly love someone means that you want to serve the other party. You want to help the person to be happy. Godly love is not selfish. It is not selfish. So if you say, I love you, it's not just by words of mouth. There must be action. There must be reaction. There must be support. There must be support. Before you get married, love is just in words. When you get married, love is in action. Love is in what? Action. And you see back it up with say no. You still have to say, oh, there was one ministration couples program I was privileged to anchor. And uh, we're asking the couples, you know, there's a special way we anchor a couples program. Say to your wife, I love you. Ah, the man said, I said it on the wedding day. If I have changed my mind, I will say it again. We have to bring love into the family. You know, it, you should be able to touch love in your house, in your action. You should be able to express it. Don't just buy gifts for your children. Buy gifts for your spouse. Remember wedding anniversary, birthday. Make days special. Special lunch, special dinner, special arrangement in the house. Just do something special. If you are not careful, marriage becomes monotonous. And you begin to ask scripts. Husband and wife, asking scripts. Good morning, good morning, good night, good night, bye bye, bye bye. There's a way you greet, there's a way you part. There's a, you just realize that you are just acting the same script. 10 years in marriage, 20 years in marriage, 30 years in marriage, the same scripts. Welcome, welcome. Good night, good night. Hey, hey, hey. You are just acting scripts. Something must be special. Hallelujah. Are you picking something? You need the heart of service. You need commitment. Is another thing. Be committed to your marriage vow. Rekindle the marriage. Strengthen the marriage. Be selfless. That is work. Oh. Make positive contribution in that marriage. Let your contribution be felt. Make contribution. Contribute in a positive way. Contribute in the life of your children. Then another work that marriage takes is forgiveness. Hey, you we have to forgive advanced forgiveness instant forgiveness <laughs> we fall backlog of forgiveness all sorts the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 instead be kind to each other tender hearted forgiving one another just as god through christ has forgiven you you know if you are living on the same street you may not really have opportunity to hurt each other okay maybe if you are doing a landlord meetings you may have one interaction or the other but if you are living in the same house in the same room on the same bed under the same duvet you have many things in common right 
and there may be instances that you have to that may be one thing or the other friction here and there but you have to forgive somebody say i must forgive say i forgive my spouse all of you keeping records of 20 years ago 30 years ago ah ah if christ should come hey eh? please forgive somebody say i must forgive release people in the prison of your hearts your in-law that did not want you to marry your husband you have been married for 20 years now and yet they are in the prison in your heart release them release them forgive and let go please forgive your husband forgive your wife forgive your children then forgive yourself forgive yourself please so that you can enjoy this life forgive forgive and forgive avoid marital error and uh, killer of marriage that is part of the work that must be running in your heart what is the error somebody can commit in marriage ingratitude you are not grateful to god for blessing you with a wonderful husband for blessing you with a wonderful wife do you know that many of your mates they are still trusting god that he will answer them one day my husband was in administration he thought he entered into a wrong hall. they said yes they are the people you wanted to minister to mature singles 60 years 70 years 50 years they are still trusting God that one day miracle husband will come, miracle wife will come. And yet you, you know, whatever you don't appreciate, we depreciate. You look at your husband, look at him, look at him, he doesn't know more than anything. He wants me today, okay? It's nice, nice. it's nice this night again, it's because of, of, of the bedroom. Appreciate what you have. Your wife cooks, she, she's boiling, she's doing this, taking care of the children. Everything you are doing together, please value each other value each other value the presence of that person in your life the contribution of of your spouse if you are seated beside your spouse say i value you say i value you many of you you do not see anything as exciting again about your spouse when your spouse is going in the front you are looking at the back oh god why is that forsaking me what kind of woman means this that, that. why did i join myself to this man appreciate him there's something good in your spouse how many of us are seated with our spouses? You are together. Uh -uh. You are seated together, but there's a chair putting us under. Please move closer. Say, I value you, love. I value you, baby. I value you, babe. I love you. I love you. Hello. Let me say this to you. In the center of the Bible, we have Song of Solomon. Go and read it. The Lord describe everything in the body of your spouse. Describe everything in the body of your husband, your wife. So it's not a sin to say I love you. It's not a sin to hug. It's not a sin to do T-H-H-K. You touch, you hold, you hug and kiss. T-H-H-K. You touch, you hold, you hug and kiss. All the couples, stand up on your feet. If you are there in the house, rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Stand up, rise to your feet. If you know where your husband is, go and meet him. Say, I love you, baby. I love you, babe. I love you, sweetie. You are just the best. I appreciate. Ah. Hello, hello, hello. Mm -hmm. You know one thing about me. I don't like people committing lucre with me. I said, look at your babe and say, I love you, babe. You are committing lucre towards me. Look at the face of your spouse and say, I love you, baby. I love you, honey. Please rise to your feet and celebrate your home. Say, my husband is the best. Say, my husband is the best. My wife is the best. Our home is the best. In the name of Jesus. If he does not want to show exactly, you put your hand behind. You put by fire by force. Hallelujah. You are still coming to the altar. Please have your seat. Let me wrap up my message. Amen. Amen. Ah, hey, I love you, baby. Oh, mama. Thank you. You are still coming to the altar when I'm rounding up. Amen. Be grateful to God for your spouse. Be grateful to God. And please be careful about carelessness. Another thing you have to be careful about is carelessness. Some people just believe that I'm now married. So, what is it? Carelessness kills marriage. They become careless in talking, in dressing, in planning, in doing things. They, I'm now married. There's no who is looking at me. 
Women, I want to say this to you. Don't dress for your friends. Don't dress for society. Don't dress for your occasion. Dress for your husband. Dress for your husband. Dress for your God. Dress for your husband. Talk well. Don't suddenly become careless with the way you handle your husband. Don't become careless. A woman was sharing with us. She visited her husband unannounced in the office. Why she was seated at the reception? There's a room behind the reception that is like a lobby. And she was hearing the conversation. And the, the colleagues of the husband, young ladies, they were not married. They were discussing her whole husband. They didn't know that she was at the reception. They would say, you, you see, Mr. Jones, very handsome, tall, hairy, the, the sister. You know, they were describing the one the woman did not see. May God open your eyes to see the best in your spouse. They were discussing. They said, look at the tummy. That tummy. If somebody like that, don't put that tummy on you. Gaga! You know, all these rotting girls. They were discussing. And uh, the woman was like, this is the same man. The woman will complain about the tummy. We complain about this. We complain about that. The moment the man came out like this to show that I am the owner, the woman just jumped. Just hugged the husband. The man was so scared. I hope there's not you. I hope there's not you. You know why some of you, you could not hug, you could not, because it's been 1930 that you, you did something like that. When I say, say I love you, it's, it's been a very long time. You have made marriage to become monotonous. You need to spice it up. A Christian home should set the pace for others. A Christian home should be a role model for others. A Christian home should be a place where others will come and come and learn. How are you doing it? We should be romantic. We should be loving. We should be submissive. We should be respectful. We should meet each other's needs. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I hear that. Number three, please develop communication skill. You need to talk. Oh. Can two people work together without agreeing on the direction? You need to talk. What discussion, effective communication will help you do? It will help your planning. Because you have what is called F-O-E for hey. Can somebody say F-O-E? F stands for your future. O stands for your old age. And he stands for your eternity. If you are not discussing where will your family be in the next 10 years. It is through effective communication you plan your family. You plan your finances. You know where you are going. If you need to jack or remain. If you need to jack or remain. You know which one to go. It is true effective communication. You need that communication. It is true effective communication. You can resolve conflicts. Conflict resolution is only easy through effective communication. You know, the way a husband and his wife, the way they deal with conflict is a good indicator of the strengths of that marriage and their maturity. If you are having a little conflict, you now have to bring bring the roof down. Now I have to start calling all the people that cares to listen. Hey, my husband has started. Oh, my wife has started. Oh, you know it shows the level of your maturity when there is conflict. It shows how you have built your home, how you have also built yourself. This is very important. Let learn to talk. A man left Lagos. He didn't drive so that the wife would not, you know, uh, know where he was going. He went to Kwara States. He got to Squara State. The village of the wife is inside, inside. So by the time he got to Ilori, the last bus for the village had gone. And unfortunately on, for him, he didn't know anywhere to go. It was too late. He had to sleep in the police station. And the kind of mosquito there, as if they rented them to come and bombard him. Where was he going? He was going to report the wife that he, he did not tell the wife what she had done in Lagos. And he left to go and report innocent person that did not even know what went wrong. Right there, over the night, the Lord said, you see the way mosquito beat you? Go back home. Go and even tell her what she has done before going to the village to go and report her. You see, please, effective communication is very important. And women, when your husband is talking, learn to be patient. Interruption is too much. Eh, don't be defensive. Try to understand the person's point of view and try to be on the same page. Maturity is needed in communication. And the last one is meeting each other's need. After you say, I do, you need to learn to meet the need of your spouse. The Bible says it advises us to be concerned for one another, 
to help one another to show love and to do good hebrews 10 verse 24 good news translation love please meet the need of your spouse women are you here women are you with me one of the needs of your husband is for you to show him regard respect your husband Ephesians 5 verse 33 we have books that talks about desperate needs of your husband desperate need of your wife how to win your husband's love and attention and so many other titles they are the book stand but i want to say this to women even if i'm going to wrap up at this junction women in particular hear me because you are my constituency i will still talk to men but i want you to hear this many women you know one trick that devil is doing he will be pushing the single to go and have sex and it's a sin to them hebrews 13 verse 4 marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the fire and the married are supposed to make love with the husband will now be running away many of you women the moment your husband begins to show some endearment show some care you indirectly you carry placard no parking no parking the way you'll be doing the attitude you'll be giving it will show to the man that you don't want him you complain my head is paining me my legs are paining me all of these things please your husband is born again but he's not blind again he sees so many beautiful babes and that's why you must get to the house and do the needful give him memory that he cannot forget in the hurry that when somebody looks at him too much he will come and report to you if he has eaten well at home fried rice everything as well at home he won't go out there and be and be stealing popcorn give your husband the best at home all the fully kitted you normally do when you are going to bed as if you are a masquerade you wear tights you wear nightwear you wear jeans you wear everything you now be fully kitted like a copper a core member in those days when we are serving they will say eh, be fully kitted you wear your crested shirt you wear everything fully kitted that's the way some women go to bed though. as if they are fighting what are you doing and you have open heaven uh, devotional in your house when the open heaven is telling you that when you enter bedroom oh, do open heaven open heaven nightwear open heaven nightwear you have open heaven as devotional don't let it end there let there be open heaven nightwear in the corner of your house what are you hiding why are you wearing uh, underwear to bed married woman you are creating roadblock the day some women will not agree the day some women will agree they will not be sending the man on her and hey, go and check whether they have locked the gate it will go ah you know we have adult children no oh. are they asleep she it will go again you know what she's doing when i send him on her and all the giri giri arise or copper trunks here will come down that's what she's trying to do please it is a sin to deny your husband your body first corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 to 5 you dress for him you give him the best at home and men too when you get to jerusalem you want to travel to jerusalem please pour cold water in front see, so that you can step on wet ground it is not that you abuse a woman in the morning you do not show her care you don't check on her up on her you not get to the house hello how are you she will say how are not because you have not shown her love you have not shown her care you have not shown concern she has been away since morning nothing no emotion and when you now get there, sir, you want to do a bad job. Oh, yeah, lie down now. You are looking at me. Lie down now. You are not romantic. You are a village brother. You need to get to the bedroom not as a Russian. Russia is not a place to go now. Take it easy. From one department to another before you hit Asso Rock. Asso Rock is not your target. I know it's your target, but it should not be fourth point of contact. Get to other department that may need allocation. There may be department of uh, here. There may be department of uh, allocation. As they are giving them allocation, you are doing laying of hand. You are preparing a woman. By the time you want to eat the asshole rock, she's ready for you without struggle. The Lord bless your home. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody I am the best. I will give my husband the best. I will not stop the chase. My marriage will not be monotonous. I will spice it up. I will give my husband the best. We will give our children the best. Our home will be heaven on earth. And Christ will reign forever. Let's rise to our feet. 
After you say I do, there is work to do. There must be a heart of service. There must be dating. There must be prayer together. There must be Bible study. There must be forgiveness. Do you remember all the points? Our elderly mommies that their spouses have gone to be with the Lord. May the Lord be with your home. May the Lord stand by you. An important aspect that you must bear in mind is the raising of our children. We have to be in unity to raise our children. The reason being that many voices are speaking to our children. We must combine our voices together to be the strongest one. Voice of social media. Voice of peer pressure. So many things are going on. They are going through a lot. I deal with teenagers. I go to campuses. So I know many things that many parents don't even know. And one of the things we can do for them to be good example. Many of our children, if you tell them, you, may you have a marriage like your parents. Right there, they will be rejecting it. Even somebody say, hey. As I mentioned that statement, somebody said, hey. Because you have not been showing them the way. Let's, in fact, you don't know that apart from your children looking at you, you have some Nicodemuses that are looking at you in the secret, learning from you. Your action, your reaction is preaching to them. Please don't fail God and don't fail our generation. The next generation, they are looking up to us. Whatever we do now, it has a lot of repercussion on the next generation. Starting from our home. If you are drinking alcohol here, yeah, please don't drink again because you will be a bad example to your boys. If you are eating your wife, don't hit her again. You will be a bad example to your boys. If you are abusing your husband, don't abuse him again. You will be a bad example to your girls. If you are lazy here, yeah, you don't do anything. You may have 10 housemates together, but be on top of the issue here. Yeah. Don't have source everything 100% and you don't have any input in the house. May the Lord help our homes. Let's raise up our hand and say, Father, help me to build a godly home. Help me to be a wife you want me to be. Help me to be a husband you want me to be. Help me to forgive. It's one of the work you have to do in marriage. You have to forgive. You have to pray. You have to study. You have to do well. Your contribution must be felt. Help me to forgive my husband. Help me to be a great wife. Help me to be a great husband. Help me to be a great mother. Help me to be a great father. I must not fail God. My children are looking up to me. Jesus, help me not to fail. I'm going home a better wife, a better husband. I want to be submissive. I want to love my wife, love my children. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Thank you, Ma. So we have two questions here. The first one says, Please, is Valentine a sin to celebrate in marriage as a Christian? Thank you. As Christians, every day is Valentine. Every day is a day of showing love. It's just that the world is celebrating February 14 as Valentine's Day to mark the anniversary of someone who fought for the good of, you know, marriage institution. But I want to say to Christians, please don't wait till that season. The love of Christ is every day. So celebrate your spouse, wedding anniversary, birthday, special day, even coming home that you have somebody at home as a companion. It was celebration. So every day should be Valentine. Let's celebrate one another. Thank you. All right. Second question. How important is sex in marriage? What can a couple do if a, part if a partner often complains of sexual unsatisfaction? Okay, that is a very thick question, and I will answer it. Praise God. I try to say some things about sex in marriage. Sex in marriage is a gift from God to the marriage. It's a sin to singles, but a gift of God to the marriage. It must be celebrated. It must not be misused. It must not be abused. If there's sexual unsatisfaction, on the part of your spouse that's the need for effective communication what exactly is the problem we must not wait till the time we need each other before we talk about bedroom affair we sit down at any other given time and see that what exactly do you want in marriage which area am i not doing what i'm supposed to do and let me say to rule as couples in the house even when you enter menopause, it is just a pause. You start play again. So sex in marriage is, even for the people that are elderly, is still there. It's something that is there. It's a way to have holy communion, to renew our covenant. 
it helps our bonding it reduces temptations it helps to renew our union so it's not something we should do as if it's just a casual thing so if there's a problem let's see that let's read christian books you are not permitted to go into horror says anna says whatever says you are doing it is godly way no sexting on phone because your husband is away oh yeah naked yourself let's be looking at my nakedness that's unrighteous we do it in a righteous way and the uh, husband can be on top wife can be on top it can be at the edge of the bed it can be on the chair it can be in your bedroom don't just go to the kitchen because of the gas cooker <laughs> enjoy the gifts of god don't abuse it don't misuse it if you are laying behind read books to educate yourself any area you are deficient in life is the area devil will be tormenting you so please go and read about it and don't be selfish when it comes to sex you want to give and the person that received too should say thank you after any love making there should be thank you appreciation time thank you for doing a good job my husband thank you for doing a good job my wife we have uh, one last question it says in times like this especially the prevailing economic situation how do you encourage spouses that lost their job husband or wife a second one says how do you put help in actions rather than prayer and fasting thank you i will start from there everything i have explained today did i mention only prayer please talk to me church because we christians we hide under only spirituality and i've mentioned here there should be communication forgiveness commitment spice up chase each other play together there should be acceptance there should be love making those are the things christians don't talk about marriage is not only about us praying alone whatever help you need you seek for it in a godly way in a right way so that you not be suffering unnecessarily so please all the other points you can get them in books how to win your husband's love and um and attention uh, desperate needs of your husband how to raise your children godly boys and girls raising girls raising boys my children must prosper before you say yes i do foolish way not to choose a life partner right way to choose how to know true love it is my turn to get married by the grace of god we have more than 120 titles of books we have written we have been privileged to write so we have so many ones you can use learning it is the, we we go to heaven the day you stop learning the day you start sinking so we just need to learn so don't let us limit you to let me just pray alone if your husband is complaining about your dressing you know that it's not only prayer you have to change your dressing am i communicating your wife is saying you are rigid it is not only prayer break the yoke of rigidity and you please be humble don't let god, god come and humble you humble yourself first so that God will not come and humble you. Because when God humbles somebody, it can be very disastrous. So those other points, commitment, communication, openness, transparency, they are all part of things that will make marriage work. It is not just that we keep praying without acting. Am I communicating? Then when it comes to husband or wife, maybe you have lost your job because of economic situation. It is time for effective communication. It is time for the family to sit down. What's the next line of action? What can we do? Not ordinarily, we need multiple streams of income. I'm telling you, we need to look at other means. And the party that is already having job, please don't use that because you are now in position of resources. You are now in custody of resources. Don't start, you know, terrorizing, threatening your spouse and be making them miserable as if they are good for nothing. Remember, it's just a short period. Though. Table will turn again. No. So be very humble to, to be in unity, cover up each other's nakedness. Then begin to cut your costs. Cut costs. You don't need to oppress anybody because your pocket will be oppressed. So just cut costs. Whatever you have to do, reduce costs, work in unity. Then begin to look for other means how you are going to get resources so that the family can progress. The Lord will help your family in Jesus' name. As many that have lost their job, the Lord will open the treasures of heaven and release his blessings upon you and as many whose businesses are shaking contracts not there again the lord will stabilize you in the mighty name of jesus